Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Marketing Blender Show. I am Dacia. And I'm Daisy. Now, today we are talking about the best marketing campaigns that have outstanding ROI or return on investment. Now, the one thing that you guys need to understand is there are actually four major components to return on investment, things that have to, the characteristics, if you will, that have to be present for a high ROI campaign. So Daisy, where do we start with that? I would say the first characteristic of a high ROI marketing campaign is the level of urgency that buyers are feeling. So when you identify something they need to solve right now, and not just the stuff that you'd like to talk to them about or the things that you think are awesome about your brand, you're addressing something that's going to make people pay attention and that's going to encourage them to take rapid action. So if you're looking to measure ROI, you need to fulfill an urgent need for your target market. I love this one too, and I'm gonna try so hard not to chase the squirrel on it, but this is so important because it shows up in so many places. For instance, a client or a prospect going through a sales cycle and then you they ghost you right at the 11th hour even though you're getting verbal yeses. It's because urgency is not there. They have not prioritized it over everything else on their to-do list. And basically, anytime you see a slowdown or show me more, the see mores, you know, any sort of increase in objections or hemming and hawing or bringing in additional decision makers, lack of urgency, and you haven't done the proper thinking, planning, or questioning to figure out where is this in their entire framework of what they care about. That's true. And the research that goes into that is having conversations with your target market, understanding what they're searching for, not to learn about, but what they're searching for in order to do something. Because when they're already in action mode, it's so much easier to steer them in your direction. Momentum. Exactly. Yes. Progress. And just get alongside of that progress. Absolutely. So the next one that we talk about is definitely scarcity. So the thing about scarcity is where can other people not match what you can provide? And so Daisy, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one. But for me with scarcity, um, yes, it's about differentiation, like something that other people cannot touch. But also, if you were to ask the question, if you were able to get in front of the prospect, but so hypothetically, if you're able to ask the question, what else would you do? And their answer is, I don't know, you know, because your value proposition or what you're providing is so clear and strong, so unique that it creates a clear path of progress for them. That for me is scarcity. Is that how you think about scarcity or do you have some additional nuance to it? I think that's a a good angle on it. I would say another very practical way to figure out where the scarcity is, find the things that your competitors are talking about, but not doing anything about. They're trying to get, capture all that attention around, oh, this is our thought leadership on this, or this is you know the things we think or our opinions, but they're not giving people practical tools. If you're the one person who's willing to put in the hard work of creating a tool, then you are meeting the scarcity need for your target market. Oh, really good point. And you're talking about being interesting. Oh. <laughs> okay. So the other one that you bring up frequently with clients, and I just love you for this, is you talk a lot about simplicity. Why is this crystal clear importance for return on investment? Some of the highest ROI you'll get from marketing campaigns is not going to be from the fanciest and the most complex or the ones that have the greatest number of moving parts or all the different iterations or all the different pathways that people can go through. But it's the ones that are the most simple and straightforward that get right to the point. They are lower in effort because they're focused on doing one theme extremely effectively. They tend to be more repeatable, so you're not reinventing the wheel over and over again. So when you have the choice, when it comes to ROI, opt for the simple, direct thing that's going to get you repeatable ROI. It's such a great point, too, because you're talking about resource allocation and what do you get out of that. So don't pour tons and tons of resources, human capital, as well as financial, as well as attention into something complicated, minimum viable product, if we're going to borrow from the software company industry, but, you know, really thinking about what is the straightest path to success for your prospect and you. 
then you can optimize. Then you can sophisticate once you're actually launch something effective. It is true that you have to spend money to make money, but that doesn't mean that the more you spend, the more you're going to make. Mm, yeah. Diminishing returns. That is a real thing. Absolutely. And that brings me to the final one, which is trackability. You guys, if we're talking about a campaign that drives ROI, you have to be able to track it. Metrics that you predetermine as important and that you watch, you know who is watching, who is reporting, and who then can create in t continuous improvement on it. I'm so surprised sometimes how much people want to focus on the whiz bang, whether the whiz bang is the mechanics of a campaign or the creative of a campaign instead of the structure of did it work and how much more can we get out of it once it is working. Exactly. It, and this is something where trackability matures over time. But if you are about to spend money on advertising or marketing and you haven't decided up front how are you going to determine if you're getting ROI out of it, don't spend it. Just don't. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you guys, we gave you the characteristics, but we promised you that we were actually going to talk specific campaigns. So Daisy, what are some of the campaigns that you've been really excited about and that have been working for your clients lately? This ad is brought to you by The Marketing Blender. As you guys know, I'm a fractional CMO, and actually at The Marketing Blender, there's a whole team of us. For a fraction of the cost of a full-time executive, you can hire a chief marketing officer to write your marketing plan, to clean up your messaging and your positioning, and to drive sustainable results. We oversee multiple partners, we help mentor team members, and most importantly, we build a marketing machine that will drive results for your company for years to come. If you're curious about what this looks like, and some of our engagements go from a couple months to a couple years, check out themarketingblender.com. The first one that I'd like to talk about is email marketing to existing clients to cross-sell and upsell services. This is a virtually no-cost way to get more revenue coming into your business through marketing. So yes, there's some time and effort that goes into building the campaigns, but you've already got the list. You've already got your email service provider set up. You've already got things that are in your pipeline that you can sell to these customers. So it's not about spending a bunch on Google ads. It's not about developing something that's complicated or putting a billboard up by the side of the road. It's literally just putting in the attention and the intentionality to reach out to your existing customers and cultivate them for more revenue. I love that because one of the ones that I had on my list was rewarming leads. And typically one of the best ways to do that is through email. And email is not dead. Email is not dead, you guys. We see it work so well when it's worth reading. I mean, yes, people want to delete emails, but they don't want to delete good high value emails that catch their attention. And you're right, so low cost and super high impact. And so for me, that was one of the reasons why it was on my list was so many people actually don't make a decision. So we've talked about this in previous episodes where your number one competitor is frequently no decision. So you guys, that oftentimes means that leads that you had six months ago, 12 months ago, 18 months ago, never made a decision. That means they still have a problem. So taking Daisy's advice and using that type of approach, that type of campaign to rewarm people's interest in matching it to the characteristics characteristics of a high ROI campaign that we already outlined, you're going to see some pretty great results. And we can vouch for that because it's been very fun to create progress for prospects and on top of that, help our clients hit sales numbers. It certainly does. The next type of really high ROI campaign that I'd like to talk about is LinkedIn ads. Now this is going to come as a surprise because there are so many gurus out there saying LinkedIn ads don't work. They cost too much. You can't get results out of them yet, yet, yet. So that's not actually true. Your ability to gain traction with LinkedIn ads is directly related to the quality of your targeting and the value of the offer that you're delivering. So I have one client that is in the building material space and they are targeting architects on LinkedIn. And the thing that they're offering is high value education that helps architects capture 
the continuing education credits that they need to get each year to maintain their licensing. This is incredibly high value for architects. It's being offered for free in a lunch and learn setting so salespeople can directly have access to architects in a group setting so they have the chance to be specified across a variety of different projects just by offering this free education. It's a massively impactful campaign. Leads are coming in that even if one architect at one lunch and learn specifies these products on one project, it's 100 to 200 times ROI per lead. I love that you're bringing this example up because it's a focus on not the cost of the campaign, but the value and the outcome that it can drive. So you're exactly right. So some people will say, oh, LinkedIn is so expensive. Okay, let's pretend expensive, just pulling a number out of there. Let's pretend that it's $5,000 a month, right? If your service offering is $5,000 and you can only land one, that's terrible ROI. However, what you're talking about, and you nailed it with this example, is when we've got clients where their return on investment, the type of you know, contracts or service, you know, contracts that they sell are anywhere from 20,000, 40,000, 200,000, a million dollars sometimes. Yes. Okay. Now we are no longer talking about cost. We are talking about the value of the outcomes and what's it worth to you. And so those are the metrics that we were talking about earlier about what are you tracking? Because there can be a knee jerk reaction for people that have never done marketing or have not done campaign style marketing to go, wow, that's expensive. Wait, <laughs> wait for it, you know, and just have the conversation, the ROI conversation up front so that you can predictably get the results that you want. And this actually is a great example to tie back into the simplicity point that I made earlier. This is a campaign that's been running for almost a year. We're plugging in different continuing education courses, but guess what? We're not reinventing the whole campaign every time. And it's continuing to work, and it's continuing to work better and better and better as it continues to optimize. We're not saying, oh, well, we did this this year. Let's try something completely different next year. We're going back to the thing that works repeatedly. Yeah. And side note, that content is scarcity, you guys. Like, it is. <laughs> this is something they really can't get anywhere else because they put in the hard work and it is going to continue to produce probably for quite a while because no one else is coming anywhere near that content, which is so exciting. It is. Yeah. I love it. I would say the, the last one I'd like to talk about is more general, but it's so important for organizations that have a decent amount of web traffic. So if you have SEO content that's ranking pretty well, you know, first page, but not the top of the first page, instead of saying, let's build out 100 pages of new content for stuff we're not ranking for at all yet, where you're going to start at, you know, page eight, page seven, and have to work your way up for months and months and months, go into your Google Analytics and figure out what are the pages that you're already ranking fairly well for, re-optimize those using your SERP opportunities, so search engine results page opportunities like adding video, adding images with alt tag, answering frequently asked questions, so that you can bump those bottom of page one results up to the top of page one, because almost all of the clicks go to the top three results, and most of those clicks go to the top one result. So if you want rapid ROI and great ROI on marketing efforts, optimize your existing content to nail those top spots so you're not just getting impressions, but you're getting the clicks because that's going to help you convert traffic into interest, interest into leads, and leads into sales. I couldn't agree more. Don't start from scratch if you don't have to. And so many people have good content or they have something in their arsenal and it's just an asset that they forgot about or don't use anymore. But especially if it's live, look at the data, see, can we take this to the next level? Oh my gosh, you're right. Talk about speedy ROI. That is a great way to shrink the timeline. Now, one of the other things, and this isn't a campaign, so I'm kind of cheating that I wanted to add this on, but making sure that there's an ecosystem around a great campaign. So for instance, if they, if, you know, if they mimicked one of your campaign ideas, 
please make sure that your organic social media is great, that your headlines and your standard best pages and highest trafficked pages on your website are great. That ecosystem where when they look in other places and it's consistent and it's powerful, that will bump up the return on investment of existing campaigns as long as there's that brand and messaging consistency across. So I love an ecosystem play, or if they're running multiple campaigns, really making sure that they're thinking through the buyer's experience and the fact that they might be coming across multiple campaigns. And there can be some really exciting ROI optimizations, you know, by thinking holistically. There can be. And one item to think about if you are using marketing campaigns to drive more traffic to your website in the interest of building your stronger ecosystem get a chat bot on your website so you can turn people who are on your website and want to have a conversation right now into warm sales leads. Yeah. We need to say a good chat bot. A good chat bot. <laughs> also, if you can do live chat, that's even better. And it doesn't have to be live chat 24 seven in order to be effective. Absolutely. So one of the examples I wanted to add to the pot is really just an extension of what you were talking about. And I'm just going to call it aha content. So a marketing funnel with a piece of content that makes them go, wow, why haven't I heard this before? Now this hits on the scarcity idea. It hits on intriguing people's interest. But the component of this that I want to talk about is that you need to be focused on the emotional impact for the person of this business decision. So one of our clients is in financial services and we created a piece where the, we are outlining the hidden reasons why people might be having financial problems those reasons why they're emotional, right? And then on top of that, in this industry, they don't go the distance. And so their competitors are not doing the heavy lifting. So there is scarcity, but the emotional impact of this makes people go, I've never thought about it like that before. And we've seen just incredibly high engagement from those prospects. They are really ready to buy. They're halfway through their decision when they're hopping on the discovery call. And that's been a really cool thing to see because the messaging resonated so strongly in that specific marketing funnel. So I like the aha content. Now you've used templates in the past and usable content versus just downloadable content. And you've seen some really great results with that as well by giving people a tool that actually creates progress for them. It does. And again, you're always tapping into people who have a more urgent need if they're willing to put in the time to do something and not just scan through a, a paper or read a blog or watch a YouTube video. If they're actually trying to accomplish something and you're the person who puts the tool in their hand, automatic trust, automatic credibility. Absolutely. So that's the thing, you guys, you can build campaigns that have extremely high ROI or deliberate ROI that you can then continue to optimize and you can do it without complexity and you can do it in a reasonably aggressive timeline, but you cannot abandon the strategic components that make that true. So we would love to hear uh, any ideas that you have. We'd love to hear your questions. And I had mentioned that we had an episode that we've talked about other campaigns before, and I'm going to go ahead and link that in the show notes for you guys. So thanks so much. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button if you liked what you saw, and we will see you next time on Word and Upward. We hope you learned something today that will help you succeed with your marketing. And if you liked what you heard, definitely give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. Don't forget to check the show notes. We're sharing free tools and resources there. And you guys, we would love to hear your comments. So drop one in or send us an email and maybe we'll use your topic on a future show.